All right, today's Sunday, May 1st. I'll do a quick little update here. Uh, I've been away from the system for about two weeks, except for a, a really quick visit last weekend, so I didn't really get a chance to look at everything carefully last time. Uh, but anyway, uh, a lot of uh, good, bad, and ugly things going on. Uh, the watermelon plant is, uh, is growing all over the place, and it's put out some more fruit. The previous fruit, though, doesn't look like it's growing very much, very quickly. Now, again, I don't know if that's just the way it is, if it grows quickly at first and then takes a while after that, or or if it's just something particular to, to this setup that it's not liking. Uh, the other thing is I have some sort of infestation here, definitely some sort of infection. I don't know what these are. I don't have enough experience to know what these little bugs are. They're little white, little white uh, bugs that just stick to the leaves. I did see them last weekend and I, I didn't have enough time to even think about what to do about them. And this weekend, they've now, whatever it is that they're doing, they leave a very ugly black uh, film on the leaves, as you can see there. Now, it's not all over the plant. Uh, but I'm sure it will be if I don't treat it with something. Now, what I tried just now, uh, earlier, is I sprayed this with some diluted molasses. Uh, the sweet smell of molasses repels some bugs. They don't like the sweetness. They prefer leaves. Usually they prefer leaves that don't have uh, as much sugar in them. So that repels them. So I, it was just some molasses. Uh, heavily diluted in water with a little bit of dish soap added in there to help it stick to the leaves. And then as I was spraying it on, I noticed that this black stuff, it's really just a residue and it actually sprays off pretty easily. So I'm going to have my caretaker take a look at this tomorrow and if he tells me that, uh, that it's all still here and the molasses didn't work, I'm going to just tell him to get the hose uh, and pressure wash, you know, gently the pressure wash all this stuff off and see if that if that keeps them from coming back. Here's another uh, fruit that's come out. I hadn't I didn't notice that last week. I'm sure it was there, but it wasn't as big obviously. And the plants pretty much all over the place. Okay, on the ugly side of things, my swirl filter still haven't been able to do anything about this. And this is that's what it looks like and there's a smell. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this thing has gone anaerobic and that's what the smell is due to. Now that ugly, that gunk, smells awful by the way. Um, anyway, it's, I guess, you know, it makes its way into the system. It falls through that funnel slowly and then it falls into my sump down here. Now in the sump, all those gases should be pretty well aerated because there's, there's so much water motion going on in here. I'm not too worried about those gases making it into my grow beds or into my raft system, but it's still something I definitely am going to have to take care of. And I have a plan in the works, I just haven't had time to, to put it into action yet. Um, on the good side, more on the good side of things, most of the plants that I planted uh, last week or two weeks ago, I guess it was, appear to have taken. Uh, here's one of them. That's a chili plant. Uh, this, uh, what is this, parsley is doing okay. Uh, here we have, uh, I believe that's a Panamanian chili plant. Over in this bed, uh, we've got this tomato plant. That one doesn't seem to be doing too well. Looks a little, looks like it's got some rot down at the bottom of it. Actually, I might take that out before I leave. And over there, we've got a couple of more tomato plants and a couple of chili plants. Now, one of those chili plants looks like something has eaten the leaves. Who knows what that is? And then uh, the rest of this stuff, if you've seen the other videos, you know that this is oregano and tarragon. And then over here, we have some basil. Uh, the zucchini plant, um, it looks impressive, but it's not producing any zucchinis. Every time it looks like it's going to produce one, they rot off. They, or they rot off, I don't know what to call it, they dry out. And they don't, they don't uh, 
they don't turn into real zucchinis. Uh, by the way, I just added uh, Icenia fetida. Those are creepy crawlers, these red wiggler worms. See them right there. I added a uh, little container about this size to each of the beds. Uh, the bottom container is the same as the top one, so it's got these holes in it. So I'm hoping they're going to crawl into my bed and work their magic with all of the fish waste, root waste, other, you know, fallen tomatoes that never got picked that have fallen down there. Uh, these worms I got off of a grower in uh, San Jose, and uh, they sell them here. So I have now inoculated all of my beds with these worms. Uh, here's the one in this bed. And I'm hoping I didn't put them in here at a time of day when it's so darn hot that they're just going to croak. Um, they need to be able to crawl into the bed where the water is, where it's cooler. Now these worms can survive warm temperature, but they, they can't survive 50 degrees Celsius, which is what it's in, what it's like inside this greenhouse right now. So uh, we'll see. Next week I think what I'm going to do is, is dig into the gravel in these beds and see if the worms have uh, made a home in there or not. Um, and the one in this bed, there's the one in this bed right there. Yeah. Anyway, so those are the gravel grow beds. Now over to the raft beds, what we have over here, these tomato plants, uh, these were planted a couple weeks ago, I think it was. They're growing nicely. These are all the yellow tomato variety. And then over here, just today, I planted all these other, tom all the, all these other tomatoes. I need, I'm going to have to check my chart, but I'm pretty sure these are cherry, uh, these are yellow, and these are Roma tomatoes. I'm going to have to check on that. And then I also planted all of these lettuces here today, except for this one in the corner, which I'm going to let go to seed and try to use those seeds to grow my own starters. But these lettuces here, these starters I got at the store. Um, once again, I'm cheating, but... Uh, you know, these starters, 16 of them cost about 2 bucks, and full grown, you know, each one's worth about 75, 80 cents. So it still makes sense to buy the starters. Um, over here on this bed, the, the mustard has just absolutely taken off. You can see that right there. I think I'm going to take these out of here today and uh, take them home. But they're just, they're huge. They taste really good. These little watermelon plants in the corner are... I think I'm just going to take these out. They're, they're still yellow. Nothing else in the system is yellow, except for these uh, chili plants over here, which may be like that normally. I'm not sure. Nothing else in the system looks very yellow. Well, these oregano, I mean, oregano uh, eggplant plants look a, yellow, a little yellow too, but everything else looks great. So I don't think it's an iron problem. And I added iron just a couple of weeks ago uh, to two migs per per liter, so I don't think that's what it is. So if I do notice anything else going yellow, I'll definitely add iron and maybe potassium to the system. Uh, but that's it. That's the only thing I would add. Calcium I have uh, set up to just leach into the system via some crushed eggshells that I keep over here. When uh, If the pH gets, gets below, I think it's God, I don't remember the exact number, but but that'll dissolve. The calcium will dissolve into the water uh, just when things start becoming acidic, so it'll automatically it kind of self-regulates the pH and adds calcium back into the system. Although there's already calcium in the fish feed, so that's not really necessary. Uh, the only thing I think that is necessary would be the potassium and, of course, the iron. Uh, so let's see my my vertical stacking system. I'm still not using it. There's one of them. The other one's over here. They're just kind of sitting here waiting for me to do something with them. I need to change my plumbing before I can use those because uh, this this plumbing that's in here, this is this one inch hose. That's one inch outer diameter. The pump that I have is perfectly capable. In fact, it's, it works optimally with a one and a half inch diameter inside diameter pipe. Now that's a much, much bigger pipe. I bought all the fittings this weekend but what I don't have is the hose. Now once I change that hose out, what, I'm, what I hope is that with this pump and that hose, I'll have enough pressure to take the water up high enough to feed these vertical towers. Without that, 
I don't have the pressure to do that. I just, I don't, haven't tried it, but I just, I doubt that I do because I, I'm just, I know how much water uh, comes out of the pipes now. And besides that, these pipes are still, you know, they're going to get worse and worse over time as more fish gunk builds up inside of them. So I would rather just go to the one and a half inch, which is, should be um, wide enough to stay clean uh, by itself. So anyway, that, that's just about it. Here's the wicking bed. These are carrots. Those have a ways to go still. And over here we have the asparagus and also some carrots. And those are doing fine. Let's leave them there. Asparagus might produce something in a couple of years. We'll see. And the other thing I did is I bought some plastic for the roof that I'm going to put underneath this, uh, this uh, polycarbonate uh, roof to try to get the heat uh, down in here. The plastic will block the UV light. This roof does not. There are polycarbonate roofs that do block the UV light, but make sure when you buy yours that you ask and make sure you're getting the kind that blocks the UV light or else you'll have the same problem I have, which is basically uh, you get tremendous heat and, well, you do get a free tanning salon out of it. I get a suntan just being in here 10, 15 minutes. It's uh, actually pretty amazing. So once I get that plastic up, uh, hopefully the temperature will come down and that might help some of the plants out. I don't know. We'll see. So that's it for now.